Life happened and you fell on rough times. Well, you don't have to wait seven to 10 years for those accounts to fall off. According to the law, experienced trades unit Equifax are supposed to ensure maximum possible accuracy. And a study has been done that millions of Americans have an inconsistent credit report. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to create a letter to remove that inconsistent information off of your credit report step by step by step. So first things first, what you want to do is create your letter based off of facts, based off of what's going on with your credit report. All right. So the first thing you want to do, of course, when you create your letter is put your name, your address, today's date, the credit, like who are you talking to? Are you talking to Experian? Are you talking to TransUnion? Are you talking to Equifax? But before you do this, you actually want to review your credit report and see what are the actual negative accounts that's actually holding your credit score back, all right? So those closed accounts, not only do, if you have more than just closed accounts, you also want to put the charge off, the repossession, the other negative accounts that's on your credit scores, I mean, on your credit report as well, and see what's actually holding them back. So what you want to do is just look at the account name and account number, because what you're going to be doing is disputing based off of um, the Fair Credit Reporting Act. All right. Now, I'll let you know that I'm not a lawyer. I'm just here to pinpoint the information that you can use to help you fix your credit. All right. So what you want to do is understand this. Based off of what we're doing is based off of 15 U.S.C. 1681, all right? And there's multiple um, laws that can help you remove those negative accounts off your credit report, all right? So what you want to do is look at the date open, right? Because nine times out of 10, this is going to be incorrect on your credit report, all right? The um, last reporting date is going to be incorrect, as you can see. Date last um, active is going to be incorrect the last payment is also going to be incorrect, all right? So there are multiple things that's going to be incorrect on the specific account that you're disputing. So what you want to do is create a letter based off of that. So what you want to do, like I said before, put your name, your address, today's date, and Experian, we're, taking, we're talking to Experian right now, so they're Experian, all right? So after carefully reviewing my credit report, I noticed that the following accounts listed below are inaccurate. The open date, the date last active, the date of last payment are showing inconsistently between all three credit bureaus, all right? You saw that on Experian, you saw that on TransUnion, you saw that on Equifax, all right? I was reading over the Fair Credit Reporting Act, section, um, section 1681EB, you are supposed to ensure maximum possible accuracy. Can you, risk, can you reinvestigate the accounts listed below? All right, so that specific law, this is the specific law that I was talking about because I know some of you are new. Um, shout out to everybody that's just watching the channel. Appreciate the love and support. But accuracy of report, right? Here's what I'm talking about. Whenever a consumer reporting agency, Experian, Trading, Equifax, or anybody else that prepares your consumer report shall follow reasonable procedure to assure maximum possible accuracy of the information concerning the individual about whom the report relates, all right? So that's where I got that specific law from. So now what you want to do is put the account name. So grab the account name on the credit report right here. You can see the account name, capital one, and then you want to put the account number right here as well on the specific letter, right? So put the account name and account number, okay? And then what we want to do is write a thorough thing that's, that's wrong with that specific account, all right? So after reviewing my credit report, this account is reported, or is reported the incorrect open date, date of last payment, and date last active. Can you reinvestigate this account according to 15 U.S.C. or Section 1681, basically 15 U.S.C. 1681 of the Fair Credit Reporting Act? Now, we can go to the specific law so you can understand where to go as well. So go to the specific law, click on subchapter three. So you can Google this, Google 15 USC 1681, click on it, and then click on subchapter three. And then from there, you want to go to letter I and the procedure in case of disputed um, accuracy. All right. So this is the procedure, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, and other consumer reporting agency that prepares your report has to follow. All right. So what you're doing is telling them based off of that law, all right, subject to subsection F, except as provided in subsection G, if the completeness or accuracy of any item or information contained in the consumer's file at a consumer reporting agency is disputed by the consumer and the consumer notifies the agency directly or indirectly through a seller of such dispute, the agency shall 
free of charge, conduct a reasonable reinvestigation to determine whether the disputed information is incorrect and record the current status. And I ain't gonna read all this. You can go and read all this, but that's what we're telling them to do. All right. So you can see what I'm talking about and why we're doing what we're doing. All right. So after you reinvestigate, um, after your reinvestigation, if you found this account to be inaccurate or incomplete or cannot be verified, can you delete this account according to section 15, I mean, uh, section 1681 I-5 of the Fair Credit Reporting Act? Now, where I got this from is from the, um, the law as well. Got that specific part of what they're supposed to do after they reinvestigate your account. So we go to number five and we can read it treatment of inaccurate or unverifiable information and you can read over this specific law but this is something that they're supposed to do so we can just read this first part if after any reinvestigation under paragraph one of any information disputed by a consumer a item of the information is found to be inaccurate or incomplete or cannot be verified the consumer reporting agency shall right what they're supposed to do shall promptly delete the item of information from the file of the consumer all right that's what we want them to do or modify the item of information as appropriate based on the results of the reinvestigation and promptly notify the furniture of the information that had that the information has been modified or deleted from the file all right so we're just clearing i mean we're just giving what they're supposed or asking them to reinvestigate the completeness and accuracy and after reinvestigation, if you cannot, of course, if found if this account if if found this account to be inaccurate or incomplete or cannot be verified, can you delete this account according to this specific section? All right. So what you want to do is do that for every single account. But this is also important as well. You want to check to see if the open date on those specific accounts are um, the open date date of last payment and date last active, all right? So let's just say this one, Capital One, has that specific problem that's wrong with the specific details that's within that specific account. You wanna to go to your next account and review that specific account and check the details that's within that specific account, all right? So you wanna check the open date, check date of last payment, check um, date last active to see if it's inconsistent on that specific account all right if it's not just delete some of it if it's just the open date date last active is wrong just um have those two things all right so we just want to uh, put the details that's what's what's wrong with that specific account all right so just list all the you know negative accounts there's an example and then from there you want to get it notarized all right this is very important if possible get a notarized you can go to your bank you can go to um ups um, just find a notary, get a notarized because when you send a letter, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax might say you sound like a credit repair company or they might not respond to your dispute. Whatever the case may be, they might stall. So what you want to do is get it notarized because now this shows that this is a real person. This is actually you and there is no hearsay, she say, whatever the case may be. So you can get a notarized. It's just an example, state of Texas. So whatever state you're in, just put the date, I mean, the state, and then put your um, date and then go get it notarized. And then from there, you want to get it certified. You also want to make a copy of your letter. So if you need to talk to um, a consumer, we'll talk about that later, but if you need to talk to a consumer lawyer, now you have copies of what you sent out to um, Experian or TransUnion or Equifax. And you have the... Um, when you get it certified, you have all the details and you have all the proof that what you said or what you did. All right. So when you send this um, to Experian, when you send this to TransUnion, when you send this to Equifax, all right, they have 30 days to do a thorough investigation, to reinvestigate those accounts that you told them to reinvestigate. 30 days and then five additional days for them to send you back that reinvestigation. All right. So some of your accounts might get deleted, right? And some of your accounts might get verified. It's okay, all right? It's just part of the process. Don't think that you did nothing wrong, but most of the time, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax probably want you to quit. So don't quit, don't give up. All right, the next letter you wanna send out is based off of um, 15 USC 1681 I-7, all right? So that's all we're doing. We're just following the procedure that is laid out for us to use to help us remove these inconsistent or incomplete or inaccurate unverifiable information 
off our credit report. Now, if you're a victim of if you're a victim of identity theft, you have accounts on there that are not supposed to be, or whatever the case may be, you do want to go talk to a consumer lawyer. It's very important go talk to a consumer lawyer. If you have a mixed file, if you, um, accounts that um, let's just say you're a junior senior and it's um, a mixed case or a mixed file, you want to talk to somebody, uh, a consumer lawyer, because they'll help you with that. Um, with that problem. And if you have a bankruptcy on your credit report, you should also talk to a consumer lawyer because most of the time they are, what they're doing is when they put that on your credit report, because technically, quote unquote, if you go to a courthouse, they say they don't report your information. So when it's on your credit report, some of the times it's going to be inconsistent, incomplete, or they do some things that's wrong. So that can help you in your favor to get that removed from your credit report and get you compensated. So you should talk to a consumer lawyer as well. So your next letter is going to be based off of uh, what happened. So when you get your reinvestigation back, you got the reinvestigation back from Experian and some of the accounts got removed and some of the accounts didn't get removed. Now, some of your accounts might get verified. So based off of if it got verified, here's what we want to do next. So put your name, put your address, put today's date. All right. Put experience address and then their experience. And then we, what we're saying is I'm right to request a detailed description of the reinvesting uh, of the investigation process, followed by your agency regarding the disputed accounts on my credit report pursuant to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which is the FCRA 15 U.S.C. 1681 I-7 under Section 15 U.S.C. 1681 I-7 credit reporting agencies are obligated to provide a description of the investigation within 15 days of receiving a consumer's dispute, all right? So what we're asking them is, you wanna put the name of the account, right? That got verified and the account number, and then can you provide a description of the procedure of the investigation used to verify this account? If you can't, delete this account. Now, you wanna see the procedure that they use to verify that account because if you go back to the law, which is this law, which is this law right here, 15 U.S.C. 1681 I-5, they're supposed to um, update your account. They're supposed to modify your account because you told them based off of your first letter, your first letter that the open date, date last payment, date last active, or whatever the case may be, the details that's within that account are incorrect, all right? So they're supposed to update it, modify it, fix it, or remove it, whatever the case may be. But pretty sure if you compare your reports from this month compared to um, last month, you're going to see that they didn't do nothing. All right. So what you want to do is look at the inconsistency. If we're still showing inconsistent, you want to say, hey, how did you verify this account? Because it's still showing incorrect. It's still showing inconsistent. All right. So you want to get this letter um, notarized as well. Send it out. Send it to Experian and then get it notarized. Um, like I said before, make sure you certify, add two forms of identification, and then you wait the time that is allotted for them. And here's what you want to do next. Now, you have a few options of what you can do. You can either file a complaint with the CFPB, you can continue writing a letter going back and forth with Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, or you can talk to a consumer lawyer and see if you have an actual case, all right? Now, nothing's 100% guaranteed when it comes to fixing your credit, but if you file a complaint with the CFPB, Guess what? You want to create a complaint based off of who, what, when, how, and everything that happened to you when you sub submitted your first letter from the second time you sent your second letter and all the laws that they filed. It. Now you have evidence of everything that you've done. Now, if you don't want to file a complaint with the CFPB, you continue writing a letter based off of all the laws that they violated. Or you can talk to a consumer lawyer, get some guidance, and if you need to talk to a consumer lawyer, I got you because we do have a consumer, consumer lawyer on a team. Now, if you want to be a part, if you don't want, you know, if you want more help, if you want more assistance, if you want more guidance on, oh, you already know, knocking the credit bureaus out, we do have a free community and a free credit repair course. And if you want to learn how to get access to that, you can go watch this video right here. It's basically going to show you how to get guidance and how to get access to that free course and that free community so you too can improve your credit to get to where you want to be.